اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الوهم واخرمني بنور الفحم اللهم افت علينا ابواب رحمتك وانصر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وأجل فرجهم. Respected listeners, سلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the One who has created everything in utmost perfection, and made the peace of blessings. of the almighty god be upon his pure and beloved messenger the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and his beloved successor the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib peace be upon him and their immaculate progeny of the ahlul bayt especially the leader of our time the awaited savior al imam al mahdi ajjal allah taala farjahu sharif allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjal farjahum let us all thank allah subhanahu wa taala for giving us this opportunity to seek knowledge I know you all love to listen stories. Stories are the building blocks of our knowledge. Today we will listen a story from the book Great Stories of the Writers. Writer of this book is Ahmad G. Virji. The name of the story is Mekdad Makes a Sip. Mekdad makes a slip all muslims know that allah is most gracious and merciful after him our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and all the imams alaihi wasallam are most kind in this story you will see how kind our prophet was it was the time after the hijrah to madina Mekhdad a Aswad, a close companion of the Prophet, was living with him. It had been only a year now that the Muslims of Mecca had moved into Medina. Although every Ansar had accepted one Muhajir as a brother to care for and look after the Muslims, in general, were still poor. For lunch the prophet used to share some dates with the companions staying with him and at night they would drink some milk they did this every day the prophet had been given two or three goats as a gift by one of the ansars the prophet's habit was that every night he used to come back late after talking to people about islam he used to go alone because firstly it was his own responsibility to spread islam also if he alone was invited by someone it was not fair for him to take along other friends and companions with him moreover he didn't not wish his friends and companions to get tired unnecessarily mikhdad relates that when they returned home at maghrib time one of the companions would milk the goats and keep everyone's share of the milk ready after praying the salat of isha he and some companions used to retire for the night and go to sleep the prophet would arrive and enter the house quietly he would say salamun alaikum softly so that only those who were still awake would hear him and reply 
and the ones already asleep would never be disturbed. The Prophet then would stay for a while and then go out again for some more mustahab ibadat. He would then come home again, drink his share of the milk and go to sleep. The Prophet would wake up at the time of namaz -e shab For this namaz, when he went out, his companions would also wake up and go out with him. This was the way of life. One night after Meghdad and the other companions had completed their salat, had their milk and gone to bed after a tiring day, Meghdad found that he could not sleep, even after having drunk his share of the milk. He was still hungry. The pangs of hunger came on and on. Mehdad noticed that the only milk that was still left was the Prophet's share. When the Prophet would return after his last mission of the day, he would drink his milk. Then Mehdad thought, Every night the Prophet of Allah is invited out. He does his tabligh and in the area that he visits, some Muslim or the other must be inviting him to his house for a meal. Somehow or the other, the Prophet must be getting food to satisfy himself. At this moment, I am very hungry. If I drink the Prophet's share of the milk, it will not make any difference to him. With that, Mehdad drank the Prophet's milk and lay down to sleep. But as it is human nature, Mikdad began to feel very guilty after having made the mistake. He deeply regretted it and thought, Oh, what a wrong thing I have done! What if the Prophet returns home hungry and he comes to drink his milk and he finds his container empty? How sad will he feel? I am the one who will make, who will have made him unhappy. I hope it will not be the end of this world for me and hereafter. In the eyes of Prophet and Allah, I would become an enemy. By now, Mehdad was restless and kept on tossing and turning in bed. Allah only knew what would happen now. As was his habit, the Prophet came in, stayed a while and then went out again. When he returned the second time, he was tired after the day's tablik and went straight for his container of milk. He picked it up and then realized that it was empty. Megdad's heart was beating fast. This was the moment he really dreaded. The empty container was in the Prophet's hand. Megdad saw the Prophet looking at the empty container and said this incredible words. Oh Allah, feed those people who feed me and quench the thirst of those who give me to drink when I am thirsty. And O oh Allah, shower your blessings on the one who drank this tonight. He surely deserved it more than I did. When Mikdad heard all this, he was quite disturbed. I am the one who drank the Prophet's share. And in return, I am getting duas of barakah. His thoughts raced. On one hand, I am getting these duas. And on the other hand, I am getting an opportunity that if I get up and feed the Prophet, I will benefit from this whole dua. The Prophet now went to his bed. Meghdad got up quietly and went outside. He found his own goat. This was the goat that Prophet Muhammad had given to him. 
when Megdad had first arrived at Medina and was still looking for a place to stay. His intention was to slaughter the goat and present its meat to the Prophet. Life will become a little difficult without a goat, but at least I will get the Prophet's dua. Prophet's duas, Mehdad thought to himself. While he was holding the goat, he realized that the goat's udder was already full of milk. Mehdad was surprised. He took the whistle and milked the goat. Then he took the milk and offered it to the Prophet. The Prophet thanked Mehdad and drank the milk. Then he said, Mehdad, you are still awake and you arrange for my milk so quickly? Mehdad replied, O Prophet of Allah, it was I who made a mistake. It was my fault. And he went on to explain the whole event. Then he said, I rushed to get you the milk just in case my eyes closed and I fell asleep. And some other Muslim presented you the food before I did and got all the blessings from your du'as. It was for these du'as of yours that I hurried so much. Prophet Muhammad wasallam then replied, It would have been better for you to have woken up your two other companions so that they also could have benefited from these du'as. Thus, the Prophet also teaches us that in doing good deeds, a person should not be selfish and do it only for himself. It is better that he or she could include other friends also. A good example is when you have your Muslim friend at home and the Salat Namaz time approaches. It is very wise to include your friend in the good deed and also offer him or her the opportunity to pray. Anyway, remember what the Prophet's prayer for Mekdad was? Oh Allah, feed those people who feed me and quench the thirst of those who give me to drink when I am thirsty. And oh Allah, shower your blessings on the one who drank this tonight. He surely deserved it more than I did. After this event, Mehdad did become wealthy and well-to-do. So here the story ends. Now let us ponder, what did we learn from this story today? We all know that one of the most important factors of Islam's advancement was the perfect conduct of the Prophet ﷺ. This fact is stated in the Holy Quran where Allah the Almighty says, Surah number 3, Ayat number 158, And had you been rough, hard-hearted, they would certainly have dispersed from around you. The Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treated all people equally and loved them. The Holy Prophet of Islam tells his kinsmen, O son of Abdul Muttalib, you cannot please all the people with money, but you should meet them with cheerful faces and good behavior, so that you may be liked by them. For wealth is limited in any case, but the capital of good morals and cheerfulness is inexhaustible. What is good behavior? Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, when questioned about good behavior, replied, Good behavior is this that you should be kind to the people and speak with them in a nice manner and meet them with a cheerful face. So we all should implement this in our lives. And if we implement this, do you know what is the reward? What is the sawab? Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, 
says the spiritual reward of one who possesses good morals is like that of one who fasts, keeps rosa and prays continuously. So let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to be kind, humble, cheerful, to have good humor. In this story, our Prophet also teaches us to give du'as to others. Just think and imagine if someone drinks your milk, what would you do? Get angry? Unhappy? Hmm, just think. Usually, we give du'as to one who helps us, but here, du'a is given to one who takes away share of milk. So, let's give du'as to others also. When they don't help us, and also when they help us, we can also spread Islam with our good morals. And lastly, if we want to join the army of our 12th master of our time, we should have good morals. Let's pray together. Allah, may Allah hasten reappearance of our 12th Imam Ajullah Ta'ala Farju Sharif and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. وآخر الدعانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين رمضان 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 رمضان